Good morning, everybody. Um, wait one second. I'm sorry for the delay, everyone. Sorry, recording. It's okay if it's recording. Today's learning should be as close to Shalema for Arnold Yehuda Hakoin. Ben Yehudas, we wish Alex Jacobs a Rafua Shalema. All right. So today's DAF is going to be DAF Ayin Fest. So yesterday, we began a new Mishnah, a new parak, I should say, not only a new Mishnah, a new parak, and it really talked about what happens, right? What's the halacha when you, we know that the Pasuk says, Vinasan you have to put the get in her hand, but can you also put it in her property, right? Yesterday, the Gemara talked about what does it even mean that she has property? How does she even have property? And that's going to come up again today, right? So again, you have to come up with a case of exactly why she has her own property. Again, we're going to see a little of that again today. But the halacha that we really need for today is we said, all right, if you put it in her property, it's divorced. If you put it in your property, the Mishnah said, even if the get is literally on the bed with her, it doesn't matter. It's still, if it's his property, she's not going to be divorced. So on that note, the Gemara picks up, we are three lines from the top, and I infest Ahmed Ali. Afilu hu imabamita, even if the get is literally in the bed with her, it doesn't work if it's in his property. Amar Rava Loshanu, El Bamita Shalom. That halach is only true if it's his bed. Al Bamita Shalom, but if it's her bed, then Migurasha, then she would be divorced. So again, we're in his house, but her bed, she is divorced. Tanya, I mean, hopefully the Brisa that says the same thing, Rabbi Yezra Omer, the Mita Shalo, Eina Migurasha, Mita Shalo, Migurasha. But if it's in her bed, she would be divorced. So again, this is his house, but her bed. So the Gemara asks, Ubemita Shalo, Migurasha, is it really true that if it was her bed in his house, this would be a proper garrison? Kalev Shalo, Kach, Bershus Mocher, who? And Shamaz Mina, Kalev Shalo, Kach, Bershus Mocher, so this is a sugi and babaswa that Emirates Hashem will see over the next you know two years, give or take, right? But the question is, right? We know that when you're whenever you're kona metalpalin, there's a various ways of how you can be kona metalpalin, whatever it is. But the question is, what if you're in the rishus mocha, you're in his store, and he puts the produce in your kalim, right? Do you still have to do an additional kinyan, or does that alone? Normally, if a guy puts stuff in your kalim that generally works as a Kenyan. But what if it's your Caleb in his store? Does that work or not? This is a whole discussion in Baba Basra. And it sounds like from the from Rabba Salacha and this Bryce that's supporting it, it sounds like her bed in his house mm -hmm. would work to, Kona, to, to to acquire this get. And therefore, maybe you're telling me it should be a Raya that, that the Caleb of the Lokeach in the Rishus of the Mokar should be Kona. But the Gora says, no, don't, don't make that that jump. I hear what you're saying, but but you don't have to say that. We can make an okimp in our case. So the Gemara says, Lo tzricha de gavoa asara. The bed itself is ten tfachim high, and therefore, what what's the reason why we would say that the Caleb of the lokach shouldn't uh, work in the rishus of the mocher? Because the mocher is, I guess, makbed on the space. Right, but I guess if you're telling me that her bed is so high, the mocher is not using, or the in this case, the husband, he's not using the space up there, and therefore he would be like mavatar the space to the wife, and therefore don't from this halacha don't bring any proofs to the much more global shaila of Caleb shalokaf for shus mocher. But the gemara says, okay, maybe the space on top of the bed, but ve'ika makom kare, right? I guess the bed, you have to almost picture a bed, not like today where you have like box springs and a bed is like taking up all that space. Imagine like four legs and the, and the husband can use all the space below the bed. It's just the space on top of the bed and that he's about to throw to the wife. But the Gemara is saying, what about the space of the legs itself? That's on the ground. So he says, all right, I'm kare look up the inchi. The husband just isn't mocked it again on that space. And therefore, again, the halacha would be that even if we're in the husband's house, but if she owned this bed, how does she own a bed? Mm -hmm. I thought everything she owns belongs to the husband. That was yesterday's job. But again, assuming she owns the bed and you put the get on the bed with her, she would be Kona. And this really doesn't uh, impact the machlokas of the, the much more global machlokas of Caleb Shalokeach um, Makom Hamocha. Okay. So then the Mishnah went on yesterday and it said, even if you're in, his house, but if you drop it, if you drop it in her lap, or you drop it in her kalsa, I think technically it's some sort of bag where they would keep like sewing stuff. But in my head, I, I just consider it like a purse. 
right? So you drop it in her purse or you drop it in her lap, even if you're in the rishus of the husband, that still works. So the Gemara is going to kind of jump on the case of the pocketbook of the purse, right? For the, exactly the same reason. The Gemara says, Am I, if you drop it in her pocketbook, why does that work? Kalev shalokach versus mokaru. Again, this is Kalev shalokach versus mokaru. This is a very complicated machlokas in Baba Basha. Why are we assuming it works? Some of you know where Shmuel kigon chahaisa kalsa tuliyavo. We're talking about a case where it's literally like hanging from it. Think almost like a, like a fanny pack. Where it's almost like, again, for the same reason, if the husband's not going to be makbid, he's only makbid on a certain space in his house. Anything that's literally on her body, that already he's not makbid. So that, you know, you can put the get in that, and that'll be fine. Chena Amrav Lazar, Amrav Oshia, Yodra Isa Kulsa, Tuluya Ba. It's, it's a, talking about a bag that is literally hanging on her person. You don't have to say it's literally hanging on her body, but it is tied to her body. So it could be on the floor, but again, so long as it's kind of tied to her body, the husband won't be mocked on the space. And therefore, if he puts the get, it's almost as if he's giving it to you, by putting it in a bag that is literally tied to you, even if it's on the floor. So again, these are all various ukintas. The point is, it's not necessarily a fanny pack. It's not necessarily on the ground, but tied to you. You're, he's putting it literally in a bag that is sitting between your legs. Again, it's, it's literally where you're standing. It's your very much your personal space. And therefore, again, the husband's just not mocking. Rav Mishar Shabar Dimi Amar, this is a, another ukimta, maybe the, the largest of, of all the ukimtas. You go into Haisa Baila, Mocher Klatos. The husband happened to be in the business of selling these handbags. And therefore, his whole house is full with these hand, handbags. So he doesn't mind. What's one more? What's the difference? That's the way Rashi explains it. The whole house is, is, has these handbags. So what's one more? He's not mocked, but and therefore, you can put it in this bag. Rav Yochanan Amar, I think he's a seller, so it's not, he's not so much a hoarder. I mean, this is this is his parnasa, right? So this is he's got these handbags all over the place. Uh, Rav Yochanan Amar, Rav Yochanan appears to be almost like the voice of reason in today's style. You don't need all these dokimpas, right? Makam Cheka Kanula, her lap, it's her space, and Makam Kalsa Kanula, her handbag, it's also it's it's her it's her personal belongings, right? When when your person invites someone to your home, you realize they're going to come, they're going to have a purse. So they don't need to have their purse right next to their body. They don't need to have it attached to their body. Even if it's in the other room, it's there. You, you, you always, you're not mocked on a person's personal belongings. You understand that she's going to come out of the house with a purse. And therefore, if you put it in her purse, it, uh, it, it works. I'm a rabbi, my time at Rabbi Yochanan. So we kind of explained it outside. Rabbi says, again, you should ain't out of mockbit. Lo amakom cheka, lo amakom kalsa. A person, again, it's all, the whole reason why we would say that Caleb shalok lokeach wouldn't work, the Makam Mocher is because he's somewhat mockbid on his face, but you're not, when you invite someone into your house, it's certainly your wife, right? You're just not mockbid on her on her purse, right? So she can have her purse, wherever she wants to have her purse. And therefore you can put your get, her get, into her purse. Tanya Nami, how can we have a... It's fair, that is definitely fair, but I guess anytime you have a guest that comes into your house, so you're not super mockbid, you know, you understand they're going to come. They're, they're going to come with with a, a call song, right? Some sewing kit, but again, a purse. Tani nami hafi. We have a brisa that kind of supports sort of Yochanan's way of learning the Mishnah over everyone else. So the brisa says, "Zarku la lasoch cheka." You throw this get into her lap. Oh lasoch kalsa or into this, you know, sewing kit. Oh lasoch kal darber shuka kalsa or anything that's like a kalsa. She's going to be divorced. So the Gemara says, Paul Dover should be Kalsa La Suye Mai. What, what was this line that says not only a Kalsa, but anything that's like a Kalsa? What's that coming to include? La Suye Tasca da Akhlava Tamri. It includes a Tasca where someone might eat dates. So what's a Tasca? So Rashi very helpfully tells us it's a Tasca a lot, but he uses a uh, stin instead of a sama. But Archibald says it's some sort of pouch where you eat. Uh, Dates. So why is this Bryce supporting Rabbi Yochanan over everyone else? Everyone else made some sort of ukimta that it was attached to the body. It was some sort of fanny pack. It was tied to you. It was literally between your legs. If that's going to be the shot, we don't really care what the bag is. It's really more where the bag is. Rabbi Yochanan says, no, it, it, it's, it's the type of bag. It's a sewing kit. And therefore, when the Bryce says, it doesn't literally need to be a sewing kit. It's something like a sewing kit. It's something that's a very, it's a personal belonging. So therefore, the Gemara says, this seems to be a ride of Yochanan's way of understanding. It's not so much physically where the bag is sitting. It's the type of bag. 
and therefore it really could be anywhere in the house because the, again, the husband is going to appreciate that a, a woman can come in with that sort of bag. Okay. So the next mission discusses a case where a husband wants to divorce his wife, but he's a little awkward mm. to do it directly. So he's a little you know, roundabout. So Amr law, man says to his wife, Kinsey star zet. Please take a look at this loan document. Mm -hmm. Little does she know it's actually really a gift, mm -hmm. right? Oh, or he just kind of like puts it behind her and he's like, oh, hey, look what's behind you. And then Korah, all right, you get to. And so she reads this thing, whether it's the star ho or it's this thing that was behind her. Sure enough, it's a get. So ain't no get that does, it's not a get. Until he literally says the magic words, he needs to say hagitech. And this is a bit of, big, bit of a finish. We all know when you go to weddings, that when you give the ring, you have to say, Haram, there's a certain D word you have to say. You don't really think of that from the get standpoint, but it sounds like you do. But Rashi makes it very clear, and we'll see in the Gemara, it's also very clear, that you don't have to say it while you're giving the get, meaning you can give her something, she later realizes it's a get, it's not going to work until you say the magic words. You don't have to say it while you give it to her. You just need to then say, Hagi Te. <laughs> I presumably the shliach would have to say it, yeah. I think I'm, I'm not. I'm not mm. sure. It's a good question. Nasan. Mm -hmm. Here's your get. Yeah. 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 Sure, yeah. the would have to give He's it. the one that would have to say. He would want to say. Yeah. I'm saying. So it's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not some, another case. Not some so let's say you do do what you're supposed to do. Not some, right? The public says, but not some and you do. You put it in her hand. But she happens to be sleeping. So it's kind of meaningless, right? So Naora, when she wakes up, Cora, now she reads. She sees in her bed, like, what's going on? And she sees this get. The Harei who gets up. Again, ain't no get. Actually, Yomer law, Hagi You're going to have to literally tell her while she's awake, Hagi Teich. So the Gemara focusing on the case where you kind of dropped it on the floor, you know, kind of said, hey, look what's behind you. You know, and also she looks and sees the get. The Gemara focuses on that case. And, and the Gemara says, Ki Omer law, Hagi Teich. When you say the magic words, my Havi, Kavali Tligi Teich, me Al Gabi Karka. This is similar to the case. Where you throw the get on the floor, you tell a woman, take the get that's on the floor. But Amarava, Tligi Teich, Melgabi Karkalo, Amar Klub, says, Nasan, be a dog. You got to put it in her hand, not on the floor. So why is it good if she turns around and sees the get on the floor? Ema, Sheshlato Meachora, you didn't literally put it on the floor. You, you kind of hung it almost like in your belt or something like that. And she grabbed it from your belt. But the Gemara says, Okay, so shlafto nami, I'll be nami nasan via da baleka. That's not you putting it in your hand. That's her taking it from your body. So lo tricha, another ukimta, da arak la chartse vishlafti. You kind of like turn your hip while she was turning around. So the point is, you made some motion, so you are kind of putting it in her hand. And time nami hachu, we have a price of supporting this. Amr la kinsi shtar chose. Oh, so shlafto me achorov. So this price is a little bit more explicit. You literally put it in your belt. And Turned or whatever it is, Karatso by Hare Yukita. Now she reads this document. Sure enough, it's a get. It's not a Sharko. Ain't no get. Acha Yomer la Hagi Teich Tiveret. It's not going to work as a get until you say the magic words of Hagi Teich. And, you know, as Evie was saying, maybe you have to even say more than that. But the point is you have to say uh, whatever it is that you have to say. Mm -hmm. But this Brayta brings another Shita as well. So, so up till mm -hmm. now, Rebbe seems to be the Shita of our mission. But the Bryson continues. Reb Shimon ben Elazar Omer lo Ola may no get Ashiyat Lenu hey Menu be Yachzar be it Nenu la be Yomer la Ha Gite. It's not enough to just say Ha You have to take the get back, and you got to redo the whole thing and do it properly, and then say Ha Gite. So you can't just say Ha Gite. You got to take it back, then do a Benasan Biada, and then say Ha Gite. So the Bryson continues. Another case, just like our Mishnah, Nasan Biada Vihiyashena. What if you put it in her hand, but she was sleeping? No, Ora, then she wakes up. The next case of someone who's sleeping, again, is just like our Mishnah. If a woman's sleeping, she wakes up, she sees the get, it's not going to work until you say, But again, the price of rings, Rav Shimon ben Elazar, and he says, Rav Shimon ben Elazar, Omer, Rav Shimon ben Elazar argues again in the second case, 
And he says, no, you can't just say the magic words. You got to take it back and you got to give it back. And then you got to say, ha, gite. So the Gemara is bothered by, you know, we had the Mishnah, then we had a Brisa that seemingly had the same halakhs of the Mishnah, but brought Rashi and Allah's and argued in two different cases. He argued in the case where you gave it to her improperly. And he also argues in the case where you gave it to her when she was sleeping. And in both cases, Rabbi Shimon Lazar says it's not enough to just say Hagite. You got to take it back and you got to give it back. So the Gemara says, Utrich, and I actually needed the Machlokas in both of these cases. De'i it marbahach kamaisa, if I only had it in the first case when the woman was at least awake. So maybe Baha'i Ka'amarebi. Maybe that's the case where Rabbi says all you have to do is say Hagite. Mishum Debasu Grushi, she was someone that was in a state to have been divorced. We happen to just do it improperly, right? But if she is sleeping, where she just is not a person that can be divorced right now, the law of Basti Grushehu, maybe in that case, even Rabbi would agree with Rashim and Alazar that you can't just say Huggy Tail. You got to take it back and give it back. And if I only had the Machlokas in the second case when she was sleeping, maybe Bahaka Amr Rashim and Alazar. Maybe that's the case when a woman is sleeping, where Rashim and Alazar would say, you got to take it back and give it back. Ava Bahaf, when she was awake, you just did it improperly. Ama Modale the Rebbe, maybe Rashim and Allah would agree to Rebbe that you don't have to take it back. You can just say Hagi Teh. And therefore it would work. Srika, that's why I needed it. The Bryce needed to explain the Maplokas in both of those cases. So Amar Rava, last thing before the new Mishnah. Rava says, Katav la get. Let's say you write a get to your wife. The Nasnu Biyad Abda Yashin Umishmarto. You put it in the hand of her Ebed. Again, how does she have an Ebed? That's really yesterday's stop. But you put giving to her Ebed who is sleeping, and he's, you know, locked in some sort of home. He's not going anywhere, right? Does that work or not? So how raise it? That that would work. But Nayar, if the Eved was awake, get because that's, uh, again, a different sugya. That's where, even mm-hmm. though an Eved is theoretically like a chatzar, mm-hmm. but not if he's awake, he's like a chatzar that's not guarded, because I guess people, I guess they have a mind of their own. And therefore, maybe it works if he's sleeping and he's guarded. But if he's awake, it's not going to work. But the Gemara asks, says, how do you, how do you see well, it's just like dropping it in a chutzr. Oh, she, is she there? The chutzr mishta no. right. she doesn't right. necessarily. But somebody says, hey, how do you think I, I, yeah, it's a, it's a good, so yeah, so that, that's really a question on the mission yesterday, exactly, how does it work, right? You can definitely drop it in her, that was the mission yesterday, you can right. drop it in her property, so exactly how does that work, yeah, I don't know, maybe you gotta check the, what's the, the, the video thing, yeah, the it? ring, you gotta check the ring and make sure someone said it properly, yeah, no, but it's a good part, I, I don't know exactly how, uh, but maybe, again, according to Shita's Rebbe, then the next time you hear, you just have to, just gotta say it, or something like that, but either way, it's a good question. But but either way, the the the, the Bryce, or at least Rubba's memory was that if you give it to an Evan who's sleeping and in a house where you know can't go anywhere, then it works. So the Gemara says, Yashinu Mishmar, to raise a get. If he's sleeping, well, it's a get. Why is it a get? Am I? Chatzar Mahalachasi. It's a chatzar that has the ability to walk. The chatzar Mahalachas, low kana. And anytime you have a chatzar, a movable chatzar, it doesn't work. All right. And this is actually Rubba's halacha. Bechi tema Yashan Shiny. Maybe he'll tell me, well, you're right. He's a an Ebed is a chazer malecha, but he's sleeping. Baba Amar Rava called to ilu mahalech lokana omed biyoshev lokana. When it comes to a chazer that has the ability to walk, even if he's currently sitting or currently sleeping, still it doesn't work. So the hilchasa bekapos. This is a gemara they've actually had earlier in the masechta. You'll have to say that Rava's halacha is only going to work not if the Ebed is sleeping and in a house that we can't move. He's got to be like tied up. If he's tied up, then Rebbe will agree that this is not a chas or mahalachas, but any other case uh, would not work if you give it to an Evan. So, okay. Either way, the Gemara is going to continue to be fairly technical. So, the next Mishnah. Haisa Omedes for Shusarabim. Let's say, you know, we're all in Shusarabim, Vizar Kula, and you throw the get to her. So, Karavla, if it's close to her, Migreshes. Karavla, Aina Migreshes. It's close to you. It's Husband in a migrashes. Mechza al mechza migrashes ve in a migrashes. It's half and half. Then it's migrashes ve in a migrashes, which we know generally means, therefore, it's we say chalitza and nagibam. We even saw earlier in the week that maybe that could even mean that the Baal still chayim in zonos, whatever it is. But the point is, it's a suffix. That's all we need for today. The same halach applies by kedushin. So if you throw the cats of kedushin, 
right? Caro to her, it works. Caro to you, it doesn't work. It's right in the middle. You got to stop it. Maybe you got to do it over again. And the same is true when it comes to a chov. What's the case of a chov? So Amr Lobal Chovo, let's say the person who is owed the money, he says to the borrower, Zrokli Chovi, throw me the money, the wad of cash. The Zarkalon, he does. Karov the Milve, if it lands close to the lender, Zacha Hamilve. So then let's say he never ends up getting the money because the dog comes and, and takes the money away. So long as the landed close to the Malve, the low is off the hook. Car of the lobe, but let's say it was close to the lobe, then something happens to the money, the lobe is high. If it's right in the middle, and again, the Mars can explain what this means, then they have to split it. You can already see how we're going to get super technical right now between what's car of love, you know. So the Gemara opens. What are we talking about? What is car of love? What is car of love? So I'm a rab, arba amos shala, zehu car of love. When we say car of love, it means within her Daladamas. Rashi explains that a person's Daladamas can be, can acquire something for you. So as long as you put this get in her Daladamas, that works. Arba Amos Shalom, Zehu Karablo, and Hei Chidami Mechta Mech, what's the case of Mechta Mechta? Amor Rav Shemul of Arav Yitzchak, Kuncha Hayu Shneem Omdin, but Arba Amos, they were both right next to each other. So the Arba Amos is really both of them. If you drop the get in there, then then again, it's some sort of stuff, right? But the Gemara says, Okay, I mean, but let's see, I mean, you cut it. If a person's Dalat Amos can acquire for you, let's see who got to that spot first. If that person's Dalat Amos, I don't care if the next person comes in as well, it was already the first person's Dalat Amos. So why don't we just look at who got there first? Again, check the footage, let's figure this out. Maybe you'll tell me, well, they both got to the spot at the exact same time. But uh, yeah, sure, it's on the same, but we generally say that, that we, we don't, Halakha's not that. Precise. People can't be that precise. Someone had to get there first. So if you're wondering, I mean, maybe this is precisely the suffix, right? After the Tzam saying, but we don't know who was first, right? And that's what the Mishnah said, the Tzam mm-hmm. So Tosas actually asked that question mm-hmm. on Ahmed Bey. It's a little confusing. Some of these Tosas is on the next page are really supposed to be on this page. But either way, but Tosas said, you can't say that's the suffix in the Mishnah because that wouldn't be Mechza al Mechza. Mechza al Mechza sounds like each one of them has a valid, like, halachic claim. And that's just like a, a factual thing. I don't know who got there first. So that, that can't be the case of Mechza al So we fall off on that. And what does it mean, Mechza al Mechza, El Amr of Ghana, Amos, Amos, Samos, Askina? They are each literally standing eight Amos apart, exactly. And the get, Yodse, Me Arba Amos, Shalo, Ladal Amos, Shalo. And the get is 3.8 Amos, you know, away from him and away from her, right in the middle. Right, and therefore, that's that's our stuff again. Why is the Gemara just said he after the same, and then gives another answer where it's everything's exact? I I, I tried to look a little bit, I, I didn't see an answer. But I, either way, that's the new uh, answer of the Gemara. That's mechza mechza. So they, the man and woman are eight almost apart, and the get is directly in the middle. But the Gemara says, I don't like that answer either, but I could gabe, because mm-hmm. that means it's still within his Dalad Amos. Right. And if it's still within his Dalad Amos, then it's not mm-hmm. Benasabi Yadav. So that can't be the case either. Mm-hmm. So, Ella, Rabba, Rabbi Yosef, the Amut Ravayu, Hacha, Bashtay, Kite, Edim, Eskim. We just have a dispute. We have two different Edim. He has her Edim, right? Acha, Somaras, Karablo, Bacha, Somaras, Karablo. And that's our dispute. And that's the Machza, Machza. And that's where we have a Sakh. Rabbi Yochanan, who, like I said, is, seems to be like the voice of. What? Well, it's a, you got to get those people running out and then figuring out exactly. Rav Yochanan seems to be the voice of reason today. And he's just like, guys, stop with the eight Amos and the four Amos. He says, no. Rav Yochanan, our car of law, Shaninu, Afilu Mea. Car of law, Shaninu, Afilu Mea. It's just, where, who is it closer to? Stop with this Dalat Amos. Where is it? It can be 100 Amos away, but is it closer to her or is it closer to him? But the Gemara says, I mean, what is the case? the Mishnah said? There's a case of mechza al mechza. It doesn't sound like mechza al mechza. So Amar of Shimon bar Abba, he says, no, no, no. Lididini magrashali me made Rabbi Yochanan. I heard Rabbi Yochanan explain like this: Who yachol shomro? He ain't yachol shomro. Is that who karav lo? He yachol shomro. Who ain't yachol shomro? Is that who karav lo? And shneim yachol the shomro. Or shneim ain't yachol and zehu mechza al mechza. Meaning Rabbi Yochanan says it's not physical proximity. If you throw a get, I'm like imagining in my head like a paper airplane or something. You're like throwing this get, and it falls in a spot where 
physically it is closer to her, but there's some sort of impediment. There's a river or something like that where in theory, if something were to happen to this cat, if a dog was gonna come get this cat, you would be in a better position to get to guard the get from the dog than she is. That's considered a car of low. And vice versa, if I throw the get in a place where it's physically it's closer to me, but she's in a better spot to grab the get, maybe there's something in, you know in my way or, or whatever it is, that would be a car of love. So what's Mefsa Mefsa? Where we each have an equal opportunity, either not neither of us are in a good spot or both of us are in a good spot. And that's where we'd say it's a suffix. And again, you can clarify all this, just put it in her hand. I don't know why we, we have to do all this, but that's the way Rav Yochanan understood the Mishnah. Amrua Rabbanan made Rav Yochanan, Mishmade Rav Yochanan, they said over shots in this Mishnah, they said it to Rav Yochanan in the name of a Rav Yochanan, Hachi, and Amr and Rav Yochanan replied, Yadin Chavrin Bavlai in the Fushay, Ki Hai Tama. And he said, wow, my Babylonian colleagues know how to explain it. He's very impressed that someone else came to him and learned the Mishnah the exact same way that he learned the Mishnah. Now Rav Yochanan lived in Eretz Yisrael. So what is he saying, my Babylonian colleagues? So Rashi says that this Rav Yonasan must have originally come from Babylon. I guess now was living in, uh, in Eretz Yisrael. But either way, Tani Nami, how we have a price to supporting this way of understanding the Mishnah? Rebbe Liezer, Omer, Rebbe Liezer says, Kol Shehu Karav La Milo, any time you throw the get and it's closer to her than him, Uba Kela Vinolo, and then a dog comes and takes it, Eina Migureshes, she's not going to be divorced. And the Gemara says, we'll speak it outside first. But she never got it. Well, the Mishnah says, if you throw it, Karav La, it works. Well, well, so the Mishnah said that if you throw a car of law, that that counts. Yeah, but but to your point, so the Mishnah is saying, I don't understand. If you're telling me that Allah is car of law, and therefore it works, why do we care that a dog took it? I mean, how long does she have to hold on to the sket after she's divorced, right? If it works, then it should work, and if a dog takes it, a dog, a dog took it. So the Gemara says, Eina Megureshes, why? Call Hecha. Tintere Batazel, right? Again, once it works, she doesn't need to hold on to the get anymore. It's probably a good idea to hold on to the get so that if a peasant ever would want to get remarried, you can have a get to show. But from a halachic standpoint, you don't need to hang on to the get any longer than you, you know, than you need it to get divorced. El Allah, Hachi Kamar. So it must be what Rav Yochanan was explaining. Kal Shakar of La, Milo, even if it's closer to him. Sorry, even if it's closer to her than him, but the Ilu Bakela Vinolo, but it had a dog come to get it. Which is exactly the way Rav Yochanan explained. It's not physical proximity. Even if it's closer to her, so long as she is not able to properly guard it, or at least he's in a better spot to properly guard it, that would be considered a car of low and it wouldn't work. And that's why in this case, where you throw it to her and it's close to her, but a dog can get it, Mm-hmm. Uh, she is not divorced. So Amr Leh Shmuel or Rabbi Yehuda, almost like another uh, he, Shmuel, I guess, argued on, on Rabbi Yochanan, and he said to his Talmud, Rabbi Yehuda, he said, Shemina, that's a, a name that Shmuel very often called Rabbi Yehuda. It means like, you know, smart one or something like that. What the Mishnah means is it says, Kar of Law means she can literally bend down and get it. So very much not like Rabbi Yochanan. It is very much physical proximity. She has to be able to bend down and get it. But, which makes sense, but don't pass in this way. That's what the Mishnah says. I get it, but we're making a takana. She's not going to be divorced until she gets it in her hands. We actually once did have a case where a husband threw it to her and it landed right under her feet, but then the man died and we had a, an aguna situation. But And they, they did not pass in like the Mishnah. I guess it was some sort of takana kazal. And they said, no, it, it, she needs to literally hold on to it. She needs to grab it. And because she didn't grab it, um, they actually required this woman to go through Chalitza. And they didn't uh, say that that was a good get. Again, notwithstanding our mission. So the Mishnah said that this car of law, car of low thing works not only by Gitin, it also works by Kedushin, and it also works by Achov. That's what our Mishnah said. So Bechain Lin and Kedush. So Amr of Asi, Amr of Yochanan, Asi said in the name of Yochanan, like Gitin Amr, they said this Allah for Gitin, but for nothing else. And you almost can't read the words. The Mishnah literally said it works for two other things, right? So Ace Bay Rabba Abalar of Asi, Bechain Lin and Kedush. And our Mishnah literally says, Bechain Lin and Kedush, 
So they answer, shiny hostel, the yatza, you're right, of course it works for Kedushin. There is a heckish Gerushin to Kedushin, right? Makisha Vaili, it's yeah, and therefore it was obvious that if it works for Gerushin, it's also going to work for Kedushin. That's not what he meant when he said it, it doesn't work for anything else. He meant, besides for, you know, it works for Gerushin, it also clearly works for Kedushin because there's a heckish that we all know about, but that's the only thing that it works for, nothing else. So they said, I mean, he's say, but read the next words of the mission, right? The Chayla in Acho. It also works for a chov. And the Mishnah even continues, Zrokli chovi, if the Baal chov, if the lender said, throw me the money, the Zarkulo, Karav la Malva, Zaha halove, if it's close to the Malva, then the Lova kind of wins. You look, you see there's a letter. Uh, Gears is a little bit off. Our mission actually said Zaha Hamalva, but if you look at, at the previous page, again, there were some Gears issues. But the point is, regardless of whether the, the actual girsa is up al malva or a lova, it all means the same thing. The point is, if the money lands closer to the malva, the lova is off the hook, meaning he, he repaid the loan. Car of the lova, if it lands closer to the lova, then halova chayiv, then the lova is going to be chayiv, meaning if something were to happen to this money before it gets before it gets to the malva. Mechza, al mechza, if it lands in between the two of them, shnehem yach lokli. So again, Rav Yochanan said this halacha is only true by Gerushin. He later clarified that means Gerushin and Kedushin. But that's it. But they asked, what, what are you talking about? Clearly, the Mishnah says it also works by a chov. Our Mishnah is talking about it. We're going to make a new kinta that the Malva literally said, you can throw it to me mm-hmm. and, and, and that'll be good enough. So the part says, Yachim Great. Like, yeah, if that's the case, that can be mocha the entire loan. The entire loan. So, like, well, of course, he says that it's going to work. He didn't just say, throw it to me, and you'll be good. He said, throw it to me, and I want, we're going to apply the halacha of how this works by, by a get. And for some reason, this would have been a bigger finish. The Gemara says, copy my name wrong. <laughs> Again, if that's what the guy says, he has the ability to cancel the entire loan. So, of course, that's, that, if that's what he wants. That's what he wants. You would have had a Havamina that the Malva, if the money gets lost, he could have said, no, I was just kidding with you. You know, even if it lands closer to the Malva. I, come on, you really think that that's what I wanted? No, of course not. The answer is no. You said it. The guy relied on you. You know, the guy relied. And therefore, that apparently is the finish of the Mishnah. But for real life, unless the Malva says this, that is not the way it works when it comes to a code. You got to actually pay the guy back. So Amr of Hizda, New Halacha, Get biyada. If you put the get in your hand, bad umashicha biyada. But there's a string. I don't. I don't know why we're playing these games. So there's a string attached to the get. Im yachol and not go ula So if the string is strong enough, where you can literally pull the get back. Eino migreshes. Im lav migreshes. The string isn't strong enough. Then she is divorced. My time up. The inon krisos beleka. We need a certain level of krisos. And if you can always take that right back, then you're not satisfying krisos. Amr of Yehuda. So I don't know how to read that word. But the point is, if her hand, normally you would assume her hand is like this. You drop a get in her hand and mm-hmm. it would stay there. What if her hand is like this or mm-hmm. like this, you know, whatever it is. So it's sloping downward. Mm-hmm. So if you drop it in her hand, it's going to fall to the ground. Right. Even if the get hits her hand, she's not going to be divorced. So the Gemara says, why is that true? He ha knuckle. Ha ki nafel, even when the get falls, ba'arba amos ti It's still landing in her arba amos. And we just said, you know, earlier today that her arba amos is kona for her. So why do we care if it literally stays in her hand or if it falls right next to her? So the Gemara is going to make another ukimta, bit alone, nah. She's literally standing by a bonfire, the way Rashi explains. And therefore, you know, by a fire, whatever it is, and it's going to fall from her hand. It's not going to fall on the ground. It's going to fall into a fire. So the Gemara says, okay, but the Tigresh may avira the Arba Amos. So it doesn't have to fall on the ground. The airspace of the Dalad Amos should be sufficient. Tivsho, Debay, Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar had this Shaila, Arba Amos, Amru, Yezlan, Avir, O Eilan, Avir. When we said that her Arba Amos can fire for her, do we mean literally the ground or even the airspace? That was a Kasha that Rebbe Lazar had. And Tivsho to Eilan, Avir. From this halacha, we should learn that airspace doesn't count. Because apparently, if it falls from her hand into a bonfire, then that doesn't work for her to acquire again. Mar says, no. You know, she's not standing by a bonfire. It's Omedes Agav Hanahar, the Meikarli Ibukite. She must be standing right near a river or an ocean. So even when you put it in her hand, if she's not going to catch it 
there's no chance with the fall. I guess by the bonfire, the Havamina was, it could at least maybe fall on the ground. It happened to fall on a bonfire, but at least it was a, a potential to fall on the ground. Now we're saying if it doesn't fall on our hand, it's clearly lost, it's clearly out in the ocean. And therefore we would say, even if generally the airspace might acquire, in this case, it wouldn't because there's no chance for it to fall on the ground. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.